Oh, hi. Welcome back. I'm so glad you could make it. Well, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my video last week. I, I've got another one for you. And, uh, well, I kind of used up all my good ideas last time. So, I, I don't really have anything funny for you this week. Hmm. Hmm. What can we talk about? Hmm. Oh, uh, I could tell you about all the fun places I went last week. Uh, well, first I went to, uh, hmm, no, no. Oh, then I went to, hmm, no. Oh, I know. I'll show you all my pets. Would you like that? This is my pet cat. This is my other pet cat. This is my pet dog. This is my other pet dog. And this is my pet baby. I have a pet gecko too, but I can't find where he is. He was, he was just here. Tanuki. I promise I have a gecko. I just I don't, I don't know where he went. I also have a pet tortoise, but she's still hibernating for the winter. And um, I only, I wake her up on April 2nd every year. What's the day anyways? Oh, it's April 2nd. Would you like to wake up my tortoise with me? All right, come on, let's go. Here we are in my basement. Now, the reason we're in the basement is this is where my tortoise, whose name is Penelope, this is where she spends all winter. Do you think that she sleeps in a bed like this? No, she actually spends all winter right here in this container. Come on in closer and take a look. The reason she spends all winter in here is that when tortoises hibernate, they need to be nice and cool. So in the late fall, I usually bring her in here. I bring her down to the basement and when she gets to be nice and cool, she falls asleep. This is Penelope. Now, what's the best way to wake up a tortoise? Is it with an alarm clock? Is it with a kazoo? Is it with pizzazz? Is it with a horn? No, those aren't the best ways to wake up a tortoise. The actual way you wake up a tortoise is with a nice warm bath. So come on, let's go give Penelope a bath. All right, first, we're gonna start by running her some warm water. All right, that's pretty good. Now, we're gonna give her a nice little warm bath. You don't want it too hot. Gonna put her right in here for a little bit. Let her soak a little bit. Nice warm water on her. Now, just let her set for a little while. Now that she's soaked for a bit, we're gonna scrub her shell. It's important to get all the little bits of her Make sure you get off all the places where she got dirt on her for the whole winter while she was hibernating. Maybe under her arm. The last thing we do is after the whole winter, her toenails have grown quite long. So we're gonna do a little nail trim, just a little bit. We're gonna see if we can get a hold of these nails There. All right, take a look at this nice little pedicure. See, her feet look nice. Her shell looks nice. She's all awake. Thank you for helping me wake up my tortoise. Oh no, this is my wife's toothbrush. I'll just put it back right there. 
I thought it might be a fun activity for us to draw a tortoise together. Would you like to draw a tortoise with me? A tortoise shell is kind of like half a circle. Now we'll draw the bottom of the shell. It's got a little lip on there. We're putting little scales on the shell now. They almost look like a soccer ball. Now let's draw the tortoise's head. We're gonna give this tortoise some googly eyes. There we go. Let's erase a tiny little spot there. Put a shiny mark. There we go. Now we need to put a little tortoise tail and maybe some tortoise legs. Tortoise feet on there and a tortoise belly. Let's erase this little part here. We'll draw some little scales on the legs here. And maybe a back tortoise leg. If you're drawing along with me at home, how's your tortoise looking? Oh, very cool. All right, maybe we'll draw some more legs over there. This shell is up a little bit too high on the tortoise's body. Since this is a computer, I can do some really fancy stuff with it. So watch this. Let's take this shell and cut it right off there. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that looks much better. So as you can see, I made a little mistake in my drawing, but I was able to fix it. Now, when I was younger and I was drawing I used to really worry about making mistakes. Does that ever happen to you at home? Yeah? Well, I've discovered that mistakes are what make you a better artist. The more mistakes you make, the better you get at drawing. Because there's only a few things that can happen when you make a mistake. One thing is you mess up your drawing, but you learn from that and you become a better artist. The other thing that can happen is you can fix your mistake, like I just did, and then you can learn from that and become a better artist. And my favorite thing that can happen when you make a mistake is that the mistake that you made was better than the drawing you meant to make. And then you learn from that and you become a better artist. Let's look back at this drawing. I like that. I'm gonna add a few more little details to it. Maybe a few more scales on there. I think that looks okay. I'm gonna upload this onto the website and you could download it from home print it out and color it. And now it's time to answer some viewer mail. We have some mail from Javier, age nine, in Arizona. Javier has a two-parter question. The first part is, what is your favorite part about being an author? Well, great question, Javier. My favorite part about being an author is when I come up with ideas. That moment where in your brain, you have this little nugget of an idea for a story, and then it grows into something else. I love that part of the process. It's the most exciting for me. The next question from Javier is, what is your least favorite part of being an author? Children. Actually, kids, children are my favorite kind of people. I like them way more than grown-ups. To answer your real question, Javier, my least favorite part about being an author and an illustrator is when I am away from my family sometimes. I love being on the road and I love seeing kids from all over the country, but sometimes I'll be away from my family for a little too long and I'll miss them a lot. Do you have any pets at home? Would you like to draw pictures of your pets for me? If you'd like to, draw a picture of your pet and then with your parents' help or your grown-ups' help, Take a picture of it and then send it to the email that you see at the end of this video. And I would love to look at it. I can't wait to see your drawings. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you next week. Bye everybody. Hmm. Is this a new flavored toothpaste? Hmm.